1 Samuel chapter 12. Um, Samuel warns the people. You ever been challenged before? And uh, Samuel's got his uh, hands full. And, um, but anyway, I'm going to read the first seven verses. It, um, Israel's going through right now. Judges is, they're getting away from judges right now. And they're wanting to, Israel's wanting a king. So, anyway, uh, and Samuel said unto all Israel, Behold, I have hearkened unto your voice. In all that you have said unto me, and I have made a king over you. And now in verse 2, And now behold, the king walketh before you, and I am old and gray-headed. And behold, my sons are with you. Because at one time, well, that's another, that's something different. But I have walked before you from my childhood until this day. In verse 3, Behold, I here I am, witness against me before you the Lord and before his anointed whose ox have I taken or whose ass have I taken or who have I defrauded whom have I oppressed or whom or of whose hand have I received any bribe to blind to blind minds mine eyes therewith and I will restore it to you in verse 4 and they said thou hast not defrauded us nor oppressed us neither has there taken Aught of any man's hand. And he said unto them, The Lord witness against you, and his anointed is witness this day, for we have not found an aught in my hand. And they answered, He is a witness. In verse 6, And Samuel said unto the people, It is the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron, and they brought your fathers up out of the land of Egypt. Now, in verse 7, Now therefore stand still, that I may reason with you before the Lord of all the righteous acts of the Lord which he hath did to you and to your fathers. Um, it started back in um, 1 Samuel chapter 8. Israel is rejecting God as king. God is sure, Samuel. Samuel, it's not, they're not rejecting you, Samuel. They're rejecting me. They're rejecting God. That's what it's about. It's no different from today. You go witness to someone, and they got that little smug attitude. Hey, that's fine, but you did what God told you to do. Like I was witnessing yesterday to a lady for, <laughs> man, that was crazy, two hours. Man, I loved every minute of it. I was getting so hoarse. I mean, praise the Lord for cough drops, but I had them. But anyway, we were talking and talking and talking. But, the, I mean, the sad part about it was she was drinking a margarita through the whole process. She was, I, I, I said, wow, drunk, talking to a drunk lady. But that was crazy. But, hey, she got the point. And uh, it doesn't, um, she knew what I, I was coming from. And I said, I told her, I said, God winks at your ignorance right now, lady. And uh, I said, well, what kind of um, church you go to? And she said, I'm a some type of a church and I said what kind of Bible do you is it you uh, use she said my pastor has all kinds of Bibles I said oh man so I told her about the King James Bible that's all, that's all we ever preach out and um, she said oh that's a hard Bible I don't understand it I said you're telling on yourself you're telling on yourself but anyway um, the point I'm getting to it starts out Go, um, in chapter 8, God assures Samuel, they're, not, uh, they're rejecting me, Samuel. They're not rejecting you. And Israel has always been that way. And people are that way, too, like I just said. But, they, people, but God's got to tell them of their consequences. If you don't follow me, here are the consequences. That's up against you. It's going to be facing you. And God's going to tell them all about it right here. It, um, Samuel's challenge for Israel at this coronation, the ceremony. This is Saul's ceremony. What's taking place? Now behold, the king walketh before you. I am old, and he said he's gray-headed. I have, and I have walked before you from the childhood. You know me. You know who I am. You know what I'm all about. I haven't done nothing wrong. 
You know everything about me, but still yet to this day, you want a new king. You want to be just like the world. And that's how people are, like I just said. Amen. Who have I oppressed? Or who have, who's, if I've taken anything from you, tell me now. Tell me what I've done against you. It's like, here I am, give me your best shot. What have I done against you to make you so upset with me? Samuel's pleading with them. And Israel's telling on themselves. That's because when you constantly go out and tell people about Jesus Christ and they have that look on their face, I've told you what you need to do. I've told you and told you. And they can't say you never told me. Because Samuel's going to tell them the consequences right here of what, kind of on the same line of what Brother Ron P. preached about. If you don't do it this way, there's consequences you're going to be facing. And Samuel's telling them, if you get a king, you're going to be taxed heavily. They're going to take your kids. They're going to take your property. And that's what the devil does. He takes everything about you. He takes your purity. He takes everything from you. That's why Jesus, I, like what I was preaching this morning, when he was... Um, when they were on um, Luke chapter 4, when he was going across the rough seas, and he finally made it. The storm was over. And the demoniac of Gadare, Jesus would break his neck to get to you, and that's what he did. He went and got that one man. That was his whole purpose. And that's what Jesus Christ does for us. He has one purpose in life to save you and to save me and he's done it if you're a child of the king this this evening you're doing what you're supposed to do you come to church oh, oh man this, this came to me in the beginning I'm, in Genesis chapter 1 it says in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth in the beginning you can take those three words in the beginning I think it's three words it says what do you do in the beginning of your day? In the beginning of your day, what do you do? That's the truth. What do you do? In your beginning, do you, preserve, do you give yourself to Jesus Christ every morning? Do you pray? Do you tell people about Jesus? Or you, that's maybe your actions tell, you, tell people that you're a Christian. But sometimes in the beginning, it's just... Well, at, at times it can be overwhelming, but I got to, I got to get back to where I'm preaching at right here. But anyway, the challenge was especially appropriate for the coordination for Samuel. He had predicted to the elders of Israel earlier what a king would do, and he would take and take and take from the people. But there is a contrast. In other words, there's a difference. Samuel challenges them to see if he had taken anything from the people, which that's what I just talked about, and through. The greedy appropriation or taking something through oppression, cheating or through violence. Uh, Samuel's wanting to know, what have I done for you to want a king in your life? He's telling them, this is what's going to happen. Things are going good. But you want a king because you want to be like the world. Verse 3, let's just go to verse 3. This is the main, in verse 3, we got, it talks about how, Behold, here I am, witness against me. Behold, the, before the Lord and before his anointed, whose ox have I taken, or whose ass have I taken, or who have I defrauded, or whom have I oppressed, or whom have I received any bribe, or blind eyes therewith, and well, I will restore it. This is the main witness God would witness in favor of Samuel's holy character. So, why did it, it, there, why is Israel rejecting Samuel in favor of the king? Because they're losing interest. That's what it is. You lose interest. Like I said in verse 1 of Genesis in the beginning, how are you spending your day? How are you spending your day in the beginning? Because if you don't present yourself to the Lord, he's going to start like, oh, oh Christ. Brother, uh, when he's knocking on your door, do I have to come in to get your attention? 
do I have to come in? God's just wanting fellowship. He's wanting fellowship. Israel is rejecting God as a king. They want to go their own way. And you have a preacher like Samuel who's telling them, if you go your way, here's what's going to happen. Verse 4 talks about how this is the clearing, his clearing. There's the threefold. In verse 4, it talks about how, and they said, Thou hast not defrauded us or d- oppressed us, neither has there taken aught of any man's hand. There's a threefold clearing of 1 Samuel. First, the people said, You're fine. You've, we cleared Samuel. You haven't done nothing wrong. This condemned Israel. It's, it's, it's talent against Israel. And the other one, it says right here, and he wanted a king instead of Samuel. Verse 5, it talks about how. And he said unto them, The Lord is a witness against you also, and his anointed is a witness this day, for we have found aught, found, uh, found, they have found, not found aught in thy hand. And they have answered, He is a witness. In other words, they're saying, God, <coughs> excuse me, is saying, God has nothing, found nothing wrong with Samuel either. And then even Saul said, that There's not an aught against Samuel. But now behold, it's going to get on here in a few minutes. That's why when pastors want to have Bible study, most people want ball games. When pastors want to have sermons or social, and people want social events, it's just in Acts chapter 4, verse 13, they, you know, people take knowledge that they have been with Jesus, but that's it. That's all they want to do. They want to take knowledge that they've been around and they think they're okay. But the thing about it is, today's people in this world, that's never been, but if people have never heard this kind of preaching before in their life, man, it's 100 degrees up here. I got to get this. Um, I'm about to fry. Uh, but anyway, um, if people have never been around this kind of preaching before, it kind of blows them away. But that's what it takes to get people to get saved. Because in the book of Romans, chapter 2 and 14 and 15, your very conscience knows, your very conscience knows that there's a God. Because everyone, it's instilled in everyone to know this. But according to, the, and this is according to my King James Bible, the total, the total of the people according to this scripture it says people know that they're sometimes in the wrong that they are in the wrong but they won't change they won't change i'm just about done but in in verse seven that this is the history of israel samuel begin in verse seven it talks about thou therefore stand still that I may reason with you before the, the Lord in all the righteous acts of the Lord which he did to you and to your fathers in the history of Israel um, Samuel begins to review some of Israel's history stand still that I may reason with you before them standing still is just a posture or interest getting their attention I'll be real quick and when Jacob came into um, when Jacob was coming to Egypt and his fathers cried unto the Lord and and the Lord sent Moses and Aaron and he brought forth the fathers out of Egypt and he made them dwell in that place and number one and when they they forgot the Lord their God they sold them into the hand of Caesarea and captain of the host of Hazar into the hand of the Philistines and they in the hand of the king of Moab and they fought against them when you start crying to the Lord he'll hear you and so that's what took place right here. God sent messengers down there to help him out, and he got them out. In verse in number two, in verse, and when they forgot the Lord, well, and when they cried unto the Lord a second time, they heard that we have sinned because we have forsaken the Lord, and we have served Balaam and Ashtaroth, and now deliver us into the hand of thine enemies, and we will serve thee. That's the second time. And so he sent Jerubbabel and Bedan and Jebethah and Samuel delivered them out of the hand of their enemies on every side, and he dwelleth safe. God's always going to get your, he'll always have your back, whether you reject him or not. He's always going to have their back back then. And finally, listen, here it is. This is the warning. 
if you will fear the Lord and serve him and obey his voice and not rebel against the commandment of the Lord, and then shall both of you and the king that reign over you continue following the Lord your God. This is what you have to do. But if you don't do that, here's what's going to happen. But if you do not obey the voice of the Lord, but rebel against the commandment of the Lord, then shall the hand of the Lord be against you as it was against your fathers. That's what's going to happen. I don't know if you're... I would say more than likely about everyone in here is probably a Christian. But if you're not, that's what's up against you right now. It's up against you. People think that God is, he is a loving God. But there's only so much you'll put up with. That's just like us, you know, being parents, you love your kids. But good night in the morning, sometimes they, they just get on your nerves. I mean, um, I've got one, praise the Lord. <laughs> and, um, but God puts up a lot with me, even, even after you're a Christian. But I'm so thankful for the loving hand of God and what He's done in my life. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening. <laughs>